nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Yeski, are we in compliance with the open meeting laws and statutes? Uh, yes, the agenda has been, the notice of the meeting has been posted on the, each school building's doors and on the website. Okay. Want to roll call, please? Mike? Yes. Kayla? Here. Sheila? Here. Um, Scott? Here. And Sue? Here. Can I have a motion to declare a legal meeting? I move to declare this a legal meeting. I'll second that. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to declare a legal meeting. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carried. Recognition of the public who wish to comment to the board. Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda items. I have a motion for approval. I move to approve the agenda. I'll second it. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. I have the finance report. Okay. So I'll start out with the checks, and then we'll go over what we other things we talked about at the committee meeting. So the regular checks were numbers 83974 to 84128. Manual checks 11201 through 11210. Transfer checks went from 2023-00100 through 2023-00112. Payroll checks, 43114 through 43140. And payroll direct deposit checks, 9000065548 through 9000658. Zero nine for a total of one million fourteen thousand thirty eight dollars and sixty six cents. Uh, we went and uh, discussed the uh, lease agreement that we have with Little Sprouts. Uh, it is not necessary to look at anything tonight and such, but we'll uh, look at it and probably have something for the April meeting, taking a look at uh, uh, the expenses and, and different things that. Uh, that we have with that with little sprouts just yeah that's set that's set to expire in june this year that's how we look yes. at it so it's not that we're renegotiating in the middle of the year where it's set to expire and obviously we want to take a look at that so yeah thank you yeah. You're uh discussion and review then of a uh, financial and budget management software by the name of, of forecast and it is something that chuck had for a number of years then he dropped it and now with Lynn here, uh, it works in with all the information we have. So it's no double inputting. It takes our system from Skyward, pulls numbers out, and goes and gives us numbers and even lets us know if we are out of variance. And so then we can kind of check back. Well, what happened that, yes, we have either spent so much less or so much more uh, than last year at this time. So uh, it's a, a very small number. Uh, there's a small one-time fee and, uh, and an annual fee. So I think total it's what, six to $8,000. Yeah, it's about, about, uh, about $8,000. I think it's $2,000 set up and then $6,000 annual fee. Um, and I agree. I mean, Lynn and I talked about it and I shared with the committee as well. Um, it takes Lynn and I two or three hours to do what this thing will do in two minutes. We have to dig through the paperwork and find the, the numbers and which fund and expenses and so on. And this program will mine directly from Skyward. So there's no ski, keystrokes at all necessary for Lynn or I to do. This will give us the data that we need. So um, extremely useful tool. Yeah. And, and a very nominal cost for all the time it saves and, and the information it can give us. Uh, then we discussed and reviewed the OPEB and uh, Kevin, can you tell me what OPEB stands for again? Other post employment benefit. Okay, thank you. Uh, you know, for the three staff members that are retiring this year, uh, as well as then look at what other members are all on the chart also. So it uh, gave us some very good information, both for now and going into the future. Uh, we reviewed the income and expenses for February. 
uh, compared them. And right now we are pretty much at a break even or right on budget. We can go and say, uh, if you remember, we were a little bit behind and yes, we've been able to catch up. Uh, partly it's been a little bit of a nicer winter this year. That's gone and helped a little bit, uh, but otherwise our interest income has really gone and, uh, and helped us uh, a lot higher than what we had originally projected. And we like to project low and that was still from Chuck. He mm -hmm. likes to project low and then be pleasantly surprised. And so uh, that has been going and helping us. And then, uh, as you see on, uh, on your report, uh, we did sell some excess items, uh, the, the Lexus car, a scissors lift, uh, some telephones, and a couple carts. And so that brought in extra money that, again, we did not budget for. So that'll go, go and help us. And then Fund 60, which we will be looking at uh, tonight uh, and discussing about eliminating it. This was the, the parents' fund for the Hawaii trip, for keeping the money separate. And, everything. and so since that is done, uh, we will, uh, I'll say, reduce that account from the bank so we save money. Uh, but yet we will keep it in our policy so that if we do need something like this again, we can then go and, and start up the fund again if we have to. All right. Kayla, anything to add? Um, I think just the only comment about the scissor lift, we mm -hmm. sold it because we couldn't get it licensed. We, 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 we couldn't get it approved. They're OSHA, certified, OSHA, yeah. OSHA said no, there's too many things wrong. So that's why. Um, and that was a 2002 or 2006 uh, model, and we got a 2018 model for... I think 7,000, so, I mean, essentially, we got more than our use out of it, so we got a new, you know, 16-year mm -hmm. lift for $2,000, so, mm -hmm. new lift, so. Okay. Okay, um, motion has been made and seconded for approval of the consent agenda items. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carried. Administrative reports. Okay, um, <clears throat> summer school will get to the booklet in April, the next meeting then. Just putting that all together for summer school. Um, printed off more data for grades three through five with a proficiency update. There's a star exam for math and reading. Learning, get ready for Act 20. How um, many kids are proficient? We're moving. Are we getting the right direction, the growth and such? Um, so we're just practicing that and using that. To get ready. Act 20, <laughs> this was interesting. So DPI recommended 30. Uh, Six reading and writing programs based on the science of reading for the legislature to approve. The legislature took the 30 and whittled it down to four accepted programs. Number one that they did approve was CKLA. So we are okay. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. So yeah, it was that was quite the article know, that reading kind of came a out reading program. Week, so. so anyway, we're we are we we're, we're in the right that. place. So that was good. Pittsville's coming on Friday because they were doing CKLA now too. They chose. So they're going to come meet with some teachers and observe on Friday. Uh, we're still finalizing the summer PD with the standards based grading and the Act 20 classes and schedules. Uh, speaking of the schedule, I figured out a monthly rotation where the teachers will meet with their grade levels. They'll meet with above a grade level and below a grade level. And that includes sixth grade coming over to talk with the fifth grade as well. So once a month, there'll be a lot of collaboration time during the flex time at the end of the day. That'll, benefit, that'll help with our extra art, extra music, and our extra high ed. Nice rotation there. Uh, we have a lot of fun things coming up in April as the weather gets warmer again with field day, Olympics, and track meets. And our three, four, and five will be taking the forward exam coming up here after Easter. So, starting to wrap things up. We have some big testing and some big things after another month and a half or so. Correct. We're busy with personnel stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, question. Just, just wondering, you know, with the, the exams, do they start right away in the morning? or Every grade or? level does what works for them, their grade level, Okay. right? I don't dictate to them. I let the teachers, you know, which tests they have to take for each, how many times for math, how many maths in reading and writing, and they work together as a grade level based on their schedule, what works for them. Okay. Um, and then they notify parents and send that out and things like that, and then we notify the staff so everybody's aware, extra quiet in the hallways and things like that. But oftentimes it is in the morning, but we also, I let them do that as well, so we don't overwhelm them. 
because fourth grade has the most tests. They have three reading, three writing, three math. Mm -hmm. You know, and you got to space that out. Otherwise, yeah. they just they don't do their best, and they're tired and exhausted and such. So yeah, the, the reason I was asking is that uh, uh, I don't know if it's done anymore, but some schools have gone and provided breakfast for their students, so they feel and have that and they feel that that helps them test better and such we used to do that but it was only for one day yeah. and since it's spread out we haven't done that anymore because yeah. it was just it was so much the well, testing correct. has increased and things like that so we used to do that but um, we just notify parents remind students have a good meal and stuff like that we always have our breakfast every day here so if students want it they're more than welcome to okay. it, so. but um, yeah so that's coming up good thank you yep. So at one of our assemblies, we have our monthly assemblies each month, and at our March assembly, uh, we had a surprise uh, at that assembly where uh, Mrs. Anderson, which is Jordan Anderson, was awarded a crystal apple, which is a really big deal. Um, there's only four chosen from all the area of all of the teachers of distinction. So it was really neat um, for that to be presented in front of the students, um, and, uh, and, they, and they did a really nice job of presenting that to her. So really... Uh, Really proud of our district for having another winner um, this year. I know we've had had some winners in the, over the past years, and it's it's really cool to see. And she'll be honored at a um, at a dinner on May first. So looking forward to attending that as well, as well as the other teachers of distinction who were also be honored there. Um, in a busy month, also with uh, athletics, our our wrestling team sent four teams to state. Uh, Wyatt Molson was at state. Um, Derek Goddard was at state. He placed sixth. Zay Grassel placed third, and, and Colton Weiler uh, finished second. So it was really neat to have the opportunity to go down and, and watch the, the championship matches, and that was a really cool experience. I'm really proud of our our district for um, and our and our student athletes for being able to uh, make it make it to that level. Uh, and then our boys basketball team also won the regional championship, which was really really neat to see. Of course, the team that wound up beating them went on to state, um, so they had, they they uh, had a really good season, and and uh, and our girls basketball team had a great season. It's just nice to. Nice to try to transition from, from season to season. And now spring sports are picking up. We have baseball, softball, um, and track and field all starting up. So students have been busy. Uh, the parking lot gets a little bit more full every night as these <laughs> sports start picking up again. Uh, we also had, you know, I remember the board agenda, we approved those, that DECA national trip. Um, and so we did have uh, Alexis Fate, who, who took sixth place uh, at nationals and was able to qualify uh, at, she actually took sixth place at state and qualified for nationals. Um, and Mackenzie Kiefer also to go to nationals um, as well. So it's really neat to see those students have that opportunity to, uh, to go to Anaheim and continue on uh, with DECA. Uh, I did want to announce that Evelyn Schmidt is our 2024 valedictorian and Logan Hardinger is our salutatorian. So if you see them, um, be sure to congratulate them. Uh, it's years of work to uh, accomplish that goal and I'm very proud of, of both of them. Another thing that are, we're doing in my building is um, we we use a program called um, FlexiSched, which we use during Eagle Time, which allows students to sign up um, in different places. And they're piloting a program called FlexiPass, which allows us to track um, who's all in the hallways at any <coughs> given time. Um, so when a student checks out to go to the bathroom, um, it, it tracks that and it gives us some data. If there's a student maybe who's using the restroom every period, um, it kind of tracks that data. I know it's difficult as a classroom teacher to be able to, to keep track of how long a student has gone if you're, if you're teaching. And, and uh, this allows us to kind of track that data to make sure there aren't students abusing the, you know, going into the hallways or, or, or using the, uh, the restrooms. So it's a, um, it's a program that we're able to try for free to see if we like it at the end of the year. And if it is something that we decide, well, that's a, that's a neat, neat addition, we'll include that for next year. Um, a lot of other districts in our area have used similar programs. And, um, and they really feel it helps a lot because what students can suddenly, when they're um, aware that the people are kind of tracking how much time they're in the bathroom, it, it becomes less of an issue. And that's that's where sometimes students, you know, may sneak in a phone break when they're in the bathroom. And, uh, and it's like, you know, how time can fly and not realize right away when you get back. So that's just one of the ways that, that you're able to get some more added class time back. Um, and so, like I said, that's something we're piloting and we'll see, see how that works as the year progresses. Um, as Andy mentioned, uh, Mr. Sharon Buck mentioned the, the testing. We have the ACT test on Tuesday. So all of our juniors will be taking the ACT. And then our 
our freshmen and sophomores to take the pre-ACT on the 26th. And what we do also is we have a field trip for the middle school, so they're out of the building and not, you know, being a distraction or being loud. So it works out well to test it on the same day and then have the middle school on their field trip um, just to make the building quieter for them to, uh, to be able to test. And we're also, because it's a long day of testing, we're also giving parents an option to um, basically sign a form and say that they're dismissed for the afternoon um, unless there's students who are failing classes. And then we, we hold them back and, and they get some remediation. But, but if students are passing their classes um, and if their parents sign their form, then they're able to go home. And that's the high school students, freshmen, um, sophomores, and juniors as well. Uh, we have some events coming up. Of course, the pancake feed this Sunday, which is, uh, you know, hopefully we get good weather for that. Um, but uh, listening to Mr. Kenoyer talk to Community Coffee today, um, really, really looking forward to a great community event. Um, this is this is something I know all of Auburndale is really proud of in our, in our surrounding communities. So if you have an opportunity to stop by there on Sunday, please do. We also will have the Brat Fry for Tractor Day on next Thursday, which uh, will be uh, from 1030 to 2. Uh, we're also doing pre-orders for um, companies can ahead of time make orders for brats. Um, this has been a huge fundraiser that's been very successful the last few years, which goes towards those Tractor Day, a Tractor Day family that we are we are sponsoring. Um, so really looking forward to that as well. We also have prom coming up um, as well as Tractor Day in April. Uh, students of the month, I, I want to make sure I mention, congratulate uh, Shelby Eckes, uh, Crystal Martinez, and Logan Dahlman for the middle school and then Elena Steins and Brody Bronski for the high school, and that was for Attitude. And then for March, our character trait is Perseverance. So uh, if you see those students, please congratulate them as well. Uh, it's neat to see we had a lot, of, a lot of students nominated in high school this month. Um, and I also, this, this month, I, I, uh, I streamed the assemblies. Um, so if you want to see Joran receive her Crystal Apple, uh, you can watch it. It's on the odd videos. Um, and there's two different parts. There's like a live and there's a, a videos. If you click on the videos, um, you can actually see those assemblies and see the students who are recognized for Student of the Month as well. You, and it was mentioned this morning, is April 6th also Sleep in Heavenly Peace? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's the bed bill. Mm -hmm. I think earlier in the day, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 8 to uh, noon. That sound right? Yeah. Pretty close. Yeah, it's it's six, I know it's so. supposed to be done by noon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot of good community events mm -hmm. coming up. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, my report um, outside of, I just, I just kind of reviewed what you guys have been receiving in the weekly updates, um, things that maybe have not been on there, stuff that's come over recently. Um, there's uh, a new legislation that's hit the, I guess, the waves uh, probably last two or three weeks about um, the DPI has uh, stepped in through the clearinghouse rules, they call it, um, to try to allow districts to have more flexibility in the start date for their school calendars. So uh, some of you are not, and you are familiar, you've heard yeah, you're mumblings reading, and rumblings. Yeah. Um, I guess the biggest thing and I know people have approached me and, and we've had some conversations amongst the superintendents. It would start with the 25, 26 school year. So, I mean, there would be nothing that would change now. Um, and the DPI is saying, um, again, with the expectation that it would still be re requested or have to be directed by the school board in that local district, but it opens up the reasons or latitude for making that request. It could be to reduce the summer slide. It could be to uh, get after the prepare students for the Act 20 or the reading standards. It could be to look at student achievement. Um, it could be any number of those, I guess, um, DPI measurables uh, that they're after um, that if we believe that this would increase or allow those things to improve, you could request for an earlier start date, and it sounds like it's with the DPI rule um, that it, it's more it's more likely to be granted. There would supersede the legislative um, input where they always push it back after September 1st. But again, that's at least something to keep an eye on if we want to explore. For us, it's unique in the sense that 
we may be able to start early, but we can't start too early because we still have the Wood County Fair that's sitting there where we're losing 30 to 40 percent of our students either showing animals or involved uh, in one form or another. So uh, it may give us some flexibility. And again, it would be something we'd have to take a look at as a calendar lines of next year. Is that a yearly request? It would be, have to be a yearly request, right? And again, I, I think I, I think it makes sense, and, and we have, we've talked as well. Kids are pretty excited about getting them back to school in, in August. Kids are not as excited about being in school in June. So, mm -hmm. and if you've got kids in cross country and volleyball and football, and they got to come here anyway, so they can't work, and that's you know over 100 of our students, including the junior highs, um, it's it's much easier. You got to be in school anyway. Let's just let's crank out a day and go to practice afterwards. So, um, again, I think that's something that we definitely should explore or take yeah. a look at as, it, as it progresses. So, yeah, this really isn't a big tourist area, so that no. you know that really that doesn't. <laughs> really affect no, our kids said, as other much. Than that, other than the fair, I think would be yeah. the, biggest, mm -hmm. the biggest thing you'd have to make sure you work around. Right. Um, you're going to see um, our dental uh, rate insurance. Our usage was about 80%. I think I told you that mm -hmm. before, which keeps our rate the same, which is excellent. Um, and then the last thing is um, uh, the 1st of April legislative dinner at Medford. Yeah. I sent out something in um, emails. Mm -hmm. I've heard back to some of you, so if you just want to let me know um, if you want to attend that or not. Mike and I went last year. Right. It, it's very good. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, I've got another meeting that night, so I'm not going to be okay. able to go, unfortunately. Okay. I, um, I wanted to, but... but I, I think we met here like at 4 o'clock. We went up there, yes. and it was uh, kind of serve yourself supper. Then the... What was there, Mike? Maybe 4... Four legislators, representatives, or yes. um, and they just sat around and and you would ask them questions off the panel and share your concerns and they would explain. And it was it was very non confrontational and it was very informative. I like I said I thought it was a, a very good meeting. So, I said if you just let me know, it's you get a meal out of it. And... Yeah, be a good time. I mean to. Lobby a little bit for the yep. 4K and other things. Yep, absolutely. Okay. WASB convention summary. Do you want to talk? I can. Um, okay. When we attended the convention, I went with a couple things that I really wanted to see. Um, one of the first things we went down for was um, the job shadow. That was one of our first things, which we stayed at that first afternoon. And the three of us attended that, which was very informative. It was nice to see how they how the schools were handling it. But it was better because they had four students there who actually were involved in it and talked about how it had changed or shaped the, what they did in school. And so that was one of the better things that we went to. I also did talk to some superintendents. I wanted to hear about how their schools were addressing 4K and how they were doing it. And I got the opinions of them to see what student achievement looked like for them. You know, the impact it had on the students themselves, impacts on families. So I wanted to see if other districts, what they thought after they had had it in place. Um, and the other thing I really wanted to hear about was Act 20. So I was talking to different schools also again about that. And that was one of the, my focuses while I was down there. Yeah, I think the, the job shadowing thing was, was a real high point when we visited that those students were so, so impressive that <laughs> it really got you excited about it. That's for sure. Uh, yes. And, and then uh, I went to a number of the finance ones and then I was the uh, delegate for the assembly and such. There were a couple meetings went there and that kind of opened my eyes hearing some of the, uh, the pros and cons of some of the different things as debated the different resolutions mm -hmm. and, and such. Uh, and as far as the finance, uh, yes, uh, interesting talking with the finance directors from uh, the different schools and different ways that they did things and schedules. And so I was able to uh, bring back a, a budget timeline schedule, a little bit how uh, one school district did it and such, and uh, share that both with Kevin and Lynn. And so uh, 
number of things that yes can go and help us financially. And I think um, the lunch things are always really interesting. Oh yeah, and I think it would be interesting to like. Explore I don't know that. if we would have a conversation with our cook or like cook or you know. Yeah, but is there a different way to do it? To get more people interested? Got a folder for us, full of stuff there. Mm -hmm. If they want to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to Job Shadow One. Um, from there, I um, I sat through Rhinelander does a has a very extensive Job Shadow program, so I was able to connect with their coordinator and superintendent. Then I went up and visited and shared what we want to do with them and got feedback, and they kind of told me that sounds really good or don't do that, do this instead or, or approach it this way. Um, and then I took that information and then built our job shuttle pamphlet. Uh, well, actually Casey made it, but um, kind of put those, those pieces Ideas. in place and, and mm -hmm. shared that out. So um, that was extremely helpful. And then I also went to one on um, uh, referendums in terms of the timing and the timelines and serving um, your public and and finding out what they can support and then looking at financial impacts and, and all those things. And again, I thought that was um, extremely helpful uh, in terms of uh, the timelines and the importance of gathering all the information before you go forward. So, um, I guess those are the, the two things that stood out for me. It was a fast, fast, what, two and a half days? Oh, wow. man, yeah. At the end of the day, your head is mush. Just to watch yeah, out. it's a lot of stuff to take yeah. in. All right. All right. Good. Um, next, focus on schools, curriculum writing. I'm not going to leave. I'm just going to stand over here. So I don't have to be different <laughs> different being. It's on, yeah, it's just warm up. Can she Yeah, that would be a good idea. So people know, at least know the voice. Is it too dark? No, it looks nope. great. We're good? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to give a kind of a quick introduction to PLCs, and then I'm going to talk about what we're doing in our collaborative team meetings during the week. So this is actually some of the same slides I used to introduce this to our staff. Could you introduce yourself so that the people who are listening to us know who you are? Sorry? Yeah, just so they know who you are. <laughs> I'm Courtney Sampolsky. I am the assistant principal at Auburndale Middle School High and High School, and I'm also the district curriculum director. So I'm going to talk about PLCs. And PLCs are what? Professional learning community. Thank you. I'll tell you that on the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have some learning objectives for you. So at the end of this, hopefully we can uh, walk away with an understanding of who, what, where, when, and why. Um, we're using PLCs at Auburndale Middle School and High School. Um, also understand our PLC schedule and how we're using that during Eagle time and understand where we're at in the process right now and what is our end goal. So at the end of a couple of years, maybe three years down the road, where do we want to be with this? So to understand what a professional learning community is, it's not a program, it's a process. So a professional learning community is a process with ongoing and con it's an ongoing and continuing process of conducting schooling that has a profound effect on the school culture and structure. It's not a team, it's the larger organization. Um, it is not, there's, there's individual teams that comprise it, which are referred to as collaborative teams. So when I talk about on Tuesday, I have my collaborative team meeting with science. Um, we're doing the PLC process in that meeting, but I'm meeting with a collaborative team. So I think understanding the vocabulary is important when you start having discussions about this. So the PLC is a process that is used. So I have a visual here that helps if you're a visual learner. So the collaborative teams, think of them as like each being a building block of the PLC structure that we're trying to implement within our schools. So like as a whole, we're trying to implement this PLC process and each collaborative team is a block that makes up the process. 
So I meet with a different team each day of the week. So on Mondays, I meet with electives and we broke them into two different groups. So I meet first with a PE, health, family consumer science, tech ed, business ed, agriculture. And then we broke the creative arts into a, a smaller team. They're all new teachers. So I meet with them the second half um, during middle school Eagle time instead of high school Eagle time. So on Mondays, I have two meetings. Tuesdays, I meet with science. Wednesday, I meet with math. Thursday is social studies and Friday is ELA. So every week, every team has the opportunity to meet. And this is sixth through 12th grade. So all math teachers are meeting on Wednesday, sixth through 12th grade. English teachers on Friday, sixth through 12th grade. We just meet in a teacher's classroom. One of the team members volunteered their classroom for our meeting. So if you wanna jot down where we meet, feel free to join us someday. Mm. So why are we doing this? So the fundamental purpose of the school is to ensure that all students are learning at high levels. By meeting in our collaborative teams, we're able to look at a lot of different factors that affect learning, but we're also able to start doing some documentation and planning, which I'll get to at the, at the very end. So educators that work in a, a PLC process, um, they're able to focus on results evidence of student learning, and they're able to use that time together when they meet with their team to really look at the results and look at the standards, look at what they're teaching, how are, how are students doing with that work. In order to ensure that all students learn at high levels, educators must work collaboratively and take collective responsibility for the success of every student. So our PLC process and our collaborative time gives us the opportunity to have those conversations and do that work. Um, and it really places a focus on, on what students are learning rather than what students are teaching because they, at the end of this, the, the end result is to look at a lot of data and gather that data uh, and see how can we do better, how can we in, improve. So this year, my goals were to meet weekly with educators and work collaboratively in their teams, take responsibility for student learning. We've been doing that, that's been successful. Um, so ongoing, uh, my goal is to facilitate and guide staff through this multi-year complex change. Uh, I feel that that has been successful. Um, I've, it, it's been nice because I kind of have two, two roles in the school, assistant principal and curriculum director. Um, so it's been nice on both ends of that to have this time because I've also been able to build relationships with staff during those times and be an accessible administrator to them every day of the week. They know they have a meeting with me, so they know um, if they have a question or something they need clarification on, they can bring it to that meeting. We can talk about that for a little bit and then get back to our collaborative work. So by May, my goal initially when I rolled this out was that teachers would have identified learning targets for at least one of their classes that they teach, begin that documentation process, and then begin to connect those to state standards for their content area. So here's an example, and I know it's very, very small, but this is the document that we're using. It's a Google Sheets. So at the very top, you have the name of the course. So it's, this was just an example from a business course. You see that the duration of the course, it's a 90 minute class. So we do have some classes that are on spinnies. So on this document, you sh eventually the end goal is that we'll have this for every class that we teach at the middle school and high school, a document that looks just like this. So then going down, I'm going to go across the columns and just explain what is all going to end up on this sheet. So we have our topic and our unit and then our state standard number, the description that is associated with that state standard number. The time is how many periods that standard or that lesson is being taught in. So that might look really different depending on the lesson or the content area. For example, like welding, they might be working on a very specific skill for two weeks. So that duration time might say 10 blocks instead of one 90 minute block. Then the next column over, we have the learning targets. And this is where I wanted teachers to be focusing on this year is writing down their learning targets. And as we did this, we realized like some staff were at very different points. Some staff had all of these written down last year. Some, it was a, a process of getting them written down this year. So that column, the learning target column was my goal in our team meetings this year. Then the next column over is engagement and activities. So what are they doing to engage the students with that learning target and with that standard? So that might be a lab that they're doing one day. It might be a worksheet that they're doing. It might be a PowerPoint or a slideshow that they're doing. The check for understanding is how are they assessing the student's learning? 
It might be a formative assessment before the kids leave the room. They fill out a quick formative. It could be a summative assessment. So that's going to change by the day. And then the final column is differentiation idea, ideas. So if you have a student who has an IEP, a 504 plan, what differentiation might you use for that lesson, depending on your student needs? So if I brought in a random sampling like I did to our curriculum committee meeting of where we're at on this, some teachers have the learning targets column filled out for their class. Some teachers finished that part and were able to go then and start filling in the standards description <coughs> and the standard number. And some, like this one, for example, found it easier to do this all at one time. So right now, the documents don't all look the same. But in two to three years, this is what a finalized document should look like. And what you're seeing right here is two days of lessons. So for a semester, I mean, just think about how long this document's eventually going to be and how much information is going to be on there. So why do we want this? Like, what, what would we do with this? So imagine this was sixth grade ELA. So we have all of our standards, all of our learning targets, all of our engagement activities. They can then meet with the fifth grade team. And if they have all of this information documented, we can start to see, okay, what standards are you covering? Are we overlapping any standards? Or are we doing any type of check for understanding or summative assessments that are similar in nature and maybe we're gonna change something out so that we're not overlapping? Or we're gonna find like, hey, nobody's hitting on this standard. Where can we fit this standard in? Is this something that we can hit on in fifth grade? Is this something we can hit on in sixth grade? And then we start to look at, at data and test scores and we start to see, okay, you know, we scored low in this area uh, in, our, in our English scores for fourth grade. So what can we be doing in fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, whatever grade it is, uh, to, to get these students to where they need to be? So that's, that's kind of the, the quick version of, of what PLCs are, are doing, what we've been working on, um, what these documents look like that teachers are creating. So I will open it up to any questions. That was a lot of information really fast. Is this per student or per class? Per this class. is per class. So every class that's taught in sixth through 12th grade right now is, is the focus. Um, and so some teachers, like let's say it's sixth grade English, she teaches one class all year long. So she's making one document for the whole year where we have elective teachers like, like our the Carrie Blonte, she's teaching numerous classes. So I told her to focus on one class to get this process started because I don't want to overwhelm our elective teachers or teachers who teach multiple classes when we've got other teachers who are just doing one document. So there are some classes that like if you ask me for a specific class, it may not be started yet because the teacher's focusing on a different different class. In the beginning you had uh, building blocks. Yes. Um, you have a block that has a, it's not fitting in right. So how do you rectify that? one of our teams isn't fitting in yeah or one of the members of the team is having problems fitting in coaching coaching coach that coach that person um, we, we've done some of that um, I've, I've met one-on-one -on -one with teachers who were specifically new have who've never written learning targets before um, and we started by talking about Bloom's taxonomy and what the different levels of rigor are. So like one day you might ask a kid to describe something because they're just learning the foundational skills of, of a content. But then by the end of the unit, you want them to be able to produce an end product. Um, and we talked about how like your rigor is going to build from the first lesson to the second to the third. So yeah, we do that just by coaching one on one with teachers if needed. So do you have like a team captain? We don't at this time. Um, that was something we had kind of talked about when we went to the conference last summer. Um, we actually had a representative from each each collaborative team at the conference that eventually the goal would be that they could lead these teams without me having to be there every day. But right now we're not at that point. And I don't, I don't want to put that pressure on any one teacher while they're still trying to do this beginning process too. We do have a couple teachers who piloted this, and they're done with their document. So um, what they started to do is, because they asked, so what do you want me to do during this time because I'm done? So the next step, you know, in three, four years would be to start taking what we have here and connecting our assessments to it. So you create a test, 
every question on that test should link back to one of these standards, one of these learning targets. So by collecting that information, you're able to take an assessment, okay, 60% of kids got question 14 wrong. What standard does that connect to? How did I teach that lesson? Maybe I didn't do a very good job teaching that lesson because 60% of kids got the question wrong. When you have everything written down, what you did, what the standard was, like that's the type of data and this type of answers you can start to get. So that's, that's like down the road where we want to be able to be. Um, but if we don't have it written down, it's hard to remember back mm -hmm. um, what, what you taught, how you did that lesson. Isn't this also having this document supposed to help when we have like new staff coming in and they see where yes. we're, what, what we're teaching when and yes. how? Yes, and I would say every new teacher in our district would have been like really happy to be handed this when they came in. But unfortunately, like we're in a situation where teachers have asked, like, hey, what am I supposed to teach? And I'm like, well, I don't really have any documents to give you. Like, let's let's see what we can find. Um, but but this, at least having learning targets and standards and, and knowing, like, how many days did they spend on this lesson, that starts to give our new teachers, when we hire somebody, a time frame and, and an outline for what was taught in the past and what they can teach in their class. Hey, so, okay, so with the standards, mm -hmm. you're, there's a big list of all the standards, and they're not specific to grade level. Is there a way that we could have, like, or maybe we already are doing this, like a master list, and as people are filling it out, okay, I'm doing this one, just so that even if we can't talk with, you know, I'm in fourth grade, talking to, you know, that they can look at this list and say, okay, this person is hitting this already, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea to create like another resource where yeah. the or even if somebody's going to change first. something, you know, just put it in that document and then other people can look. Yep, or even if they move the standard from one class to the next, it can all be documented on there. Yeah, that's a great idea. We've not started something like that, but that's something we could definitely do. Anybody else? I just wanted to add that you talked about that PLC conference that we went to in Minneapolis. So, um, Courtney, I, and five teachers went. Um, it was an awesome experience. They, they really, um, this is where this idea came from. Mr. Yeski had said, this is what we, from previous experiences, this is what our district needs to go to. And we're planning on going back again this year with another team. So we're trying to recruit teachers to go this year from the different departments as well. So that's kind of what we're in the process of doing again to, to take another group of teachers there because the, the five teachers that went there had a really good experience and they really helped um, lead this, having those teachers trained in the, and the mindset is is really helpful or pushing things out like this. So. And then this connects now to our standards based grading at the elementary school. <coughs> this summer we're going to pull out mm -hmm. those main standards, build the report back for sixth grade to look at what sixth grade was doing and vice versa when they taught. And start seeing gaps and seeing what's doing. So this goal. all bridges together. So the standards based grading at the elementary is made up with the PLC. Mm -hmm. You see how it's all forming together there? Good job. Lots of data will become available through this process. Good explanation, too. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, building and grounds report. <coughs> Okay, we met uh, March 13th. We talked about flooring in the high school and kindergarten rooms. Um, high school, I think it was uh, the hallway between the two gyms. And yeah. yeah, by the office. Yeah, by the by office, office there. by those benches that are, it's just, it's wore out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Mike went over the, the resale mm -hmm. uh, stuff. Capital improvements, we talked about the track, the roofs, um, boiler and handler, um, facility studies. Um, we talked about uh, wrestling and archery space. Um, both programs are getting bigger. We're running out of space for the wrestling and the archery. Well, archery really doesn't have a space, so. <laughs> Gym space that they keep taking, yeah. yeah. Uh, elementary model here um kevin was going to 
was it uh, today? I actually oh. met with them. Yeah, the um, facility paper from PRA came, um, and we just walked around uh, the building. We had talked about, you know, what are your what are what are your visions? So I again just looking at again at this point in time, just what what do we what could we use that we do not have? Um, and, and again, I think the obvious one was a, a community center of some sort. Um, that was not that would not be in the building. Um, I know there's um, uh, Spencer has, has built a community center. Abbotsford is building one um, using FEMA dollars um, to help subsidize or help cover the cost of that. So we talked about that as a, a possibility. Maybe we could have a utilization for archery or wrestling um, as an option. Um, the other thing that we we struggle with, and I. Every time I'm over there, and I still can't believe it's the same, our cafeteria is way too small to handle the volume of kids and the volume of people that are in there. Um, we, 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 it, it's not functional the, the way it is. Um, so looking at that and then the possible expansion into some sort of an auditorium or if you could combine the two, again, not saying it's going to happen, just looking at options. So we walk through those, our science classrooms, still have the original floor from 1960s um, fixtures. Um, they're outdated. They do, don't function very well. Um, so um, they just came around today, took some pictures, took some measurements. They're going to drop some ideas, some designs, and some plans, and then share back to us maybe in June or July. Um, and then we can kind of take a look at them. And if that's something we want to look at pursuing in a year or two that's something again that will go take to the community um, in terms of what um, they believe they could support or what the financial impact of that would be we know that um, again the the decision was made last year to levy exactly what was needed to cover um, the, our debt payment so i mean the district is set up in a very good spot if they need to move forward or would want to move forward with something like this. So, um, but again, at this point in time, nothing is being planned. Nothing is being pushed forward. Nothing is going to be brought to the public for them to consider. We're just at the point we're just gathering information. That's all we're doing. I guess the only thing we, we would is the roofs that we, um, we've talked about it before, you know, they, 25 years old or some are even older than that, that that has to be taken care of soon. Mm -hmm. So um, 25 years ago, people decided we need to do this. So I guess it's our responsibility to, to keep it up and uh, uh, make sure it's taken care of. And that's that's just part of the deal. Mm -hmm. So and we'll try to knock some of those out um, if we can as, as money um, if we're able to put money into Fund 46 again um, to knock some of those off. But at this point in time, we just don't know what we're going to have. We know we don't have enough now to do it, but again, we're hoping we can knock some of those off as it, as it progresses here. The big indicator will be what happens this weekend, probably, in terms of our roofs. <laughs> I mean, we had a we had a 100-foot gap open up in the elementary that they found and they plugged. Yeah, <laughs> Sean knows about it, um, where, you know, water was getting in. But thankfully, we haven't had snow in, on our roofs in two months. So, like mm -hmm. I said, this this you know Thursday night and probably Forget Sunday, Monday, three Tuesday, five inches is going to be a very really good in indicator of, green on of, of what shape our roofs are in. So, yeah. Anything okay. Else? Let's be questions with that, Mike. Do you have any questions with that? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Great. Did personnel meet? No. 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 Okay. Policy committee. No. 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 Culture committee. Uh, culture did meet, and uh, the survey uh, was, was shared by Mr. Yusky, and uh, that uh, there's different time frames with it and everything. And I think uh, teachers are going to get it this next week, today. Easter week. Oh, they got it they today. Got it today. Okay. And then. Uh, uh, students will end up getting it right after Easter, and then the community will have a chance in the July-August time frame mm -hmm. for that. So it'll be uh, interesting to see how everything 
compares now to what we've had in the past, etc. Mm -hmm. on that. Uh, then also, uh, we do have Bob Lenz uh, coming on uh, April 23rd and 24th. And I've got elementary on the 23rd. Is that right, Andy? Thank you. And then the 24th, uh, going to be two times on the 24th one, I believe, for the senior high one for the middle school. Um, did discuss a little bit uh, about the cell phone policy, uh, discussed a little bit about setting a budget for next year. And then uh, I believe uh, last day that the seniors are here, they're going to come down to the elementary and I think walk the halls, that type of thing. And also they're going to help with Springfield Day for the elementary. Uh, and so I think that's most of it. Mm -hmm. I thought I, I thought the um, articles with the biographies of the teachers in the district mirror yes. that was a result from that culture committee, and yes. I thought that was fantastic. I learned a lot about those people that I didn't know before, so it was really nice. I thought. Yeah, and and that's something. It's we we just focus on the three retires because we want to yeah, get them right. on their way out. Yeah. But each each quarter, each you know four times a year, we'll have three or four staff members that aren't retiring just mm -hmm. we'll take elementary secondary uh, para and then uh, and then one other uh, person just to feature them in the in the mirror so mm -hmm. yeah that was really nice okay curriculum committee um, the curriculum committee met march 11th <coughs> uh, it was quite lengthy um but a lot of things were discussed a lot of i think progress is being made um, these, we discussed the math textbooks, special education, um, the English language arts, um, options for science textbooks um, or science online training, social studies, and the Spanish curriculum. Those are just that. Those were complete areas of textbooks or curriculum that we're going over. Um, those are still in some areas that need to be investigated, and I'm sure we'll come back with those. There has been a movement in our health course, um, and we talked about what effect that will have on the physical education courses. Um, just the fact that they're, um, correct me how this goes, Kevin, I don't know how they're going to switch things over with health so that. Right now it's eight and 10. Right. We would change it to just nine. Right. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right, right now our, no, the six. state statute says students must have one credit of health between grades eight and 12. Right now our students are getting health in eighth grade, 10th grade and 11th grade. So as we have pushed more health, which I have no problem with, um, but when your health teacher is also your phi ed teacher, by having so much health, it reduces how much phi ed we can offer. And again, we're, we're down to two phi ed teachers for grade six, 12. Um, and with those two, one of them is teaching health. So we, did, we, did, so we had to scale back on the health. So we had to make a change so instead of going eight to ten, the in the future we're just going to go ninth and eleventh. So we're going to essentially cut a third of that out, and hopefully allow that to be picking up some phi ed. Now that change is not going to go into effect directly. Steve, do you want to talk a little bit about because there's actually be a gap year, otherwise our eighth graders would miss that. So, right, yeah, just we just got to plan out so that the kids are still getting all the help that they would need uh, moving forward. We are talking about. Um, not offering eighth grade help this coming year potentially because they would then get it as ninth graders. Um, and that would allow us also to give um, phi ed Such on great. a year, year long basis. Cause right now our seventh and eighth graders only get phi ed for a semester and then they go a whole semester without phi ed. That's not ideal. So uh, this way they'll have phi ed the whole year, but every other day. So mm -hmm. it'll, it'll equate to the same amount of time, but it'll be spread out. And the teachers were definitely in support of that. Um, because as you know, middle school kids can get pretty pretty rambunctious if they don't have uh, <laughs> their exercise in, in a day. So that'll be something that we'll be able to change into next year ready. And uh, and the health teachers supported this change as well. I mean, it was there was nobody that had any any uh, objections to it. So and then since it's every other day, that opens up the opportunity to have different classes. Right? Yes, yes, yes. So that's, that's the the, the other thing is we talked about a study hall. And uh, that was not popular with the teachers because uh, our students don't have a lot of work in the block schedule to start with. And so a study hall would be kind of that 40 minutes of time when they wouldn't really have anything to do and then it becomes babysitting. 
So what we're looking at doing is adding some courses um, that that would that fill some needs that the students have. Um, and so we, uh, Courtney and I have talked with the middle school staff about what they see as, as needs, and then that will go through the curriculum committee as to what classes will be offered in that gap time. Um, and then there would also be, the idea would be there'd also be a, a, a weekly recess as well for, for the middle school seventh and eighth grade on that Friday. Um, so it would be two days of fly head and then two days of coursework. And then, um, but the idea wouldn't be that, that those coursework days would be added homework. They'd be, you know, they're, they're going to cover their topic within that. And then, uh, so yeah. I looked at that when you were talking about it, and then you suggest some of those suggestions that came out. I looked at those courses that you described as more of enrichment. Yes. Because the course offerings that you described, I'd like to take a few things in there. Um, I thought they were very well done, and I'm sure that when, the, when you tell me the teachers are excited about that, and they were coming up with one more idea, one more idea, one more idea, and they actually had to scale back. So those to me sounded like a really good way for those two days to be used every week. Um, and the idea of a, that recess at the end of the week, yes, I thought that was also an excellent idea. Um, it's, a, it's a good incentive too, you know, so if there are students who don't meet their, their goals for the week, then, then that recess, they may have to do some remediation work or stuff like that. So it gives a, another incentive, which is always nice in the middle school ages to have some homework choices. So, and then we also talked about the, dis, we had a discussion about how you're going to support um, the four through eight collaboration and the K through 12 collaboration. And then we did go through the curriculum mapping. And Courtney presented a couple of just different ones that were done at the different stages they were at. So we got to see what you saw tonight, but we got to see it in the different stages. So it was a really good meeting, I thought. Awesome. All right. Do uh, we have any correspondence? None? Nope. Positive happenings. Have they had silver in the ensemble yet? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah we did. Yeah. Silver yeah. ensemble. Yes, yeah. we do events at Wichita State. I think that was before our February meeting. Oh, meeting okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And obviously, you know, the best thing to go in the state and, and their success in, uh, in our athletics. Mm -hmm. um, and the Jordan Lane and the Crystal Apples. All right. She was also, Joan was also recognized by the veterans also. She was. For all the work that she does for them. I think she was given a flag at Veterans Day. Yeah. I remember right now they mm -hmm. put a flag to display in her classroom. Yep, that was, well, that too, but there wasn't there something just recently? She won another award from the VFW. Yeah, yeah, yeah she VFW. Did. I remember last year I noticed that Joan Anderson and Sue Fowler both had teacher distinction last year. Right. Yeah. And when Jordan, from that, the become teachers of distinction, now she went mm -hmm. to that next level. But Sue Fowler is still our teacher of distinction for the so elementary school. will also be recognized right. at that, mm -hmm. at that May banquet as well. So it'll be yeah. Sue and Jordan. And then Jordan actually gets to give a speech. So, uh, She's really <laughs> excited about it. Actually, about it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, she's not here tonight. Yeah. Okay. Maybe she's home preparing. <laughs> yeah. All right, we can move on to the action items. The first item is approval of a speech language pathologist contract. Alyssa Haas. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve the speech language pathologist contract. No, I'll second it. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? As, as I'm looking at it, just, just a couple things I, I guess that I don't understand. Uh, with, under the extra assignments and such, if she is interested in being uh, a volleyball coach or a club advisor or something, as what, what is her process to kind of let us know that she's somewhat interested in something like that? If there's a position that would open up, she would just have to apply. Okay. So a position has to open up. Correct. Okay. Um, and so does she share that with the interview committee after she's employed? I guess what can, what's the process so that people even know that she might be interested in something like that? That's one of the questions we generally ask in the interview process. Okay. Through the interview process. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carried. Approval of a fifth grade teaching contract to Cooper Weinford. I move to approve the fifth grade contract for Cooper Weinford. Oh. Thank you. A motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Approval of a third grade teaching contract to Isabel Hilber. I move to approve the teaching contract for Isabel Hilber. I'll second that one. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? Not all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Approval of the CESA 10 services contract. I'll make a motion to approve the CESA 10 service contract. I'll second it. Motion is made and seconded for approval of the CESA 10 services contract. Any discussion? No? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. No? Opposed? Motion carried. Approval of the dental insurance plan for 2024-2025 school year. I move to approve the dental program for us. I'll second it. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Approval of the resolution to close Fund 60 checking account at First State Bank. <clears throat> I move to uh, approve the resolution for closing the Fund 60 checking account at First State Bank. I'll second that. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Approval of the resolution authorizing adoption of the Wisconsin OPEB Trust Trust and Custody Agreement and appointing trustee. I make that motion. I'll second that. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Approval of the resolution authorizing adoption of the Wisconsin OPEB Trust Investment Advisory Agreement and appointing the investment manager. I move to approve the adoption of the Wisconsin OPEB Trust Investment Advisory Agreement and appointing the investment manager. I'll no second that. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? We talked some about this in the finance committee meeting and everything, so that everything looks fine. Yeah. It, it just a point. Um, last year, the board made a decision <coughs> to establish an OPEP trust that was for to, to go in effect this year. This is the now the process we're actually going to be establishing those accounts and, and making deposits because we do have people pulling from it now. So oh, okay. that's why again if you think where's this been? This was started last year, but now it's the time where we have to start okay. putting putting our funds in there. And that has all been budgeted for for this budget. So it's not any surprises. Okay. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carried. Second reading and approval of 352 co curricular trip exhibit. I 
I move to approve the co-curricular trip uh, field trip request form exhibit. I second that. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? <coughs> now that this is second reading, and we had talked about this before and everything, and uh, uh, greatly simplifies things as well as supplies uh, consistent information for everybody. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Second reading and approval of 443.3, use or possession of tobacco products. I move to approve 443-3. I'll second that. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Second reading and approval of 443.4, .4, use or possession of alcoholic beverages. I'll make a motion to approve 443.4. .4. second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? Just, just as a point that, that that's going to have a name change as well now because we're obviously adding drugs and or, or paraphernalia, paraphernalia yes. to that so, policy, yes. okay. so. All right. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Consideration of future agenda items. Okay, you did? I say we yeah. gotta... If we could get start getting wages approved, um, not just teachers, but support staff, yeah. administration, and then for extra duty and miscellaneous wages too. Yeah, and yeah, we've got the CISA 5 contract that has to be on there. I know there was more. I already have a long list. Yeah, I know there was. <laughs> Taking advantage of a short one now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything that you guys have that you want to have um, discussed and open? Because every everything we've talked about is going to be a few months out, really. I mean, if you do a facility study, anything like that, that's all that few. Is, that's a few that months stuff. out. I mean, from my perspective, as I look here in the next <clears> month. <throat> um, AEA, um, with the teachers, um, we'll get insurance updates. We'll sit down with them. We'll sit down, like I said, uh, Casey said, with the groups, um, talk about wages moving forward. Um, insurance. Right, and I won't get that. They already told me that's not going to be until the middle of April. So, I mean, there's really nothing that's pressing. It's all going to come all at once. So, again, mm -hmm. if we can knock out some of those, that would be beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, We're just kind of in a holding pattern right now until I guess some groups, or until we get some more information in terms of what to do next financially. Um, yeah. I can't think of anything that's not already a, that we already have discussed. So. Okay. All right. Consideration of available dates and scheduling of future meetings. Okay. No personnel has to meet sooner rather than later. Kayla and Mike, you guys could be looking at your calendars for. <laughs> Next meeting will be the third Wednesday yet in April. So that'll be April 17th. May ends up, uh, we pulled it up a week so yeah. we don't uh, be a short one. Then, for sure. yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll have senior awards. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Senior awards night on the 20, no, the 15th. 15th. So we're meeting on the 8th of May. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. 
15. That's yeah. Yeah. 15th is cool. Oh, that's short. Yeah. Okay. Personnel you wanted to meet quickly? You want that sooner well, rather than later? I would, I would like to. I'm looking over here, Scott. First week of April there? Okay. I'm here April 1st. I, know, I don't know if anybody else is. It's the day after Easter, but I'm, I'll be here that day. I want to. Uh, that's Scott's money is never up. It'd have to be in the afternoon at What's one o'clock. One o'clock. One o'clock. One o'clock. Oh, April. Cool with that. Sure, April Fool's Day. Great. <coughs> Four one at one. Yes. And, okay. And then just remember, we got the meeting out at Medford later yeah. that yeah. day and everything. No, that'll be good. Okay. Um, building and grounds. We don't, don't have anything for a while. I don't see any. We don't see any. We don't see any. We don't see any. Right. Not, not in April. But by May, maybe. 54 or 64 but million. Right now, we're just we're seeing where we're at budget wise and everything else. So there's no need to do anything with that. Um, That's crazy. Policy, finance, you want to try to crank them out same day again? That seems to work okay for me. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What uh, What day you want to shoot for? Okay. Either. One, either. Okay. Either. either, you know, Monday or Tuesday just before the board meeting because that gets a close for all the financial items and everything. If that doesn't work, we could meet the end of the previous week. I would prefer to meet the Monday before or that that Tuesday, there's I got a, that's the externship. The uh, yeah, destination career, the externship at and Coloma. Coloma on the 16th. Okay. And um, what day are our students going to go? Do you know? So the, can we just go the 15th yes. then? We yeah. did we did Monday this week. Correct. This yes. time didn't we? Yep. Yeah, that's fine. So, so 4:15. And, and then what what time in the day works for you? 30. Some. Would eight thirty on Monday? I like having a, a little bit of time to get prepared. Okay. So finance at eight thirty. Is, no. is that okay? Otherwise, yep. Okay. Policy following. Yeah. Yes. And if you guys have any policies that you want reviewed or any <coughs> things that need to come forward, if you want to send those out to me or get them mm -hmm. to me, then I can do some digging and get those on yep. the agenda. Curriculum, do you think? Oh. Culture's already set for the 24th of yes, April. Yes, correct. April 22nd? It'll be after the next board. So we won't meet them before the next one because that would give you enough time to, um, for textbooks, get yeah, all that stuff, a lot to get. Of stuff to finalize. Yeah. So we don't have to meet this next month. That's fine. Yeah. And then we could meet the next so then we'd be ready for the May meeting. <coughs> or, I don't care. Yeah. It, whatever works best for, for you guys. Because you said you've got a lot of stuff to get. Yeah. Okay. So we won't, yeah, we don't need someone then for curriculum. Okay, so we won't schedule that one? No. For the next meeting, okay. okay. Anything else? Are we okay. And a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Okay. Second. Oh, second that. <laughs> okay, motion is made and second. All those in favor? I don't know. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Eight, two. I, I was writing, <coughs> Scott, so I didn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um,